Welcome to the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 minutes with New York Times bestselling author, Adam Zickerman. In this podcast, we're going to discuss my original vision for how we started Inform Fitness and where I want Inform Fitness to go and where we think exercise should go in the future. It's nice to see that my original intuition over 20 years ago has been validated by some recent science. So we're gonna bring on some scientists in this industry, some great testimonials from clients that have experienced this. I'm gonna be bringing in musicians and very interesting people, bodybuilders talking about how little they actually work out. It's going to shed some light on some very important topics. All right, welcome back to the Inform Fitness Podcast with Adam Zickerman. My name's Tim, and we are at episode three, The Importance of Muscle. We'll get down to that in just a minute. But listen to that music in the background. Just kind of give that one. It's got a good groove to it, don't you think, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I sure as hell think so. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, was Mike Rogers, the GM of Inform Fitness in New York City, who who wrote and performed uh, our theme music. What's the name of that song, Mike? That song is called Allergic to the Medication. I actually, uh, I co-wrote that with my uh, my partner, Brian Lord, who uh, currently lives in Portland, Oregon, uh, and hence the demise of the Hypertonics. That was our band. Um, <laughs> but, cool, uh, you know, every once in a while we pop out and we have a show every once in a while, you know, to, to bring back the love. But yeah, that was one of our, uh, that was one of our uh, favorite songs. Well, well, we're going to put you on stage at our one-year anniversary show, perhaps, maybe, and uh, we'll have a show in New York and L.A., because that's where we're broadcasting from, or podcasting from. All right, let's get into it, guys. Let's dive in. So we've had a couple of episodes uh, under our belt now, and if you haven't had a chance to listen to uh, episodes one and two, we invite you to go back and do so. Episode one, we talked to Adam Zickerman in great detail about Adam's history, what led him to building his empire at Inform Fitness, and this slow-motion, high-intensity workout, which is what this podcast is all about. This show is for those that are looking to supercharge their metabolism, increase cardiovascular endurance, and build muscle. And that's what today's episode is all about, building muscle or just the importance of muscle beyond the uh, the obvious, guys. The obvious is uh, you know functionality. We want to look good and get as many uh, right swipes for all of you single people out there, I suppose. But Adam, walk us through the importance of, of muscle, not just the obvious the things that we're all aware of well let's well actually i do want you know the first of all the obvious is not so unimportant i mean there's so many things but let's start with the obvious Mm -hmm. i mean i guess the one obvious thing about building muscle would be looking better right look you know looking chiseled looking defined Mm -hmm. looking strong looking fit and and that's that's an aesthetic thing And, and that that's probably the obvious one to me though especially for baby boomers I'd have to say that's probably fifth on the totem pole of importance. Yeah. You know, Uh, to me, probably the most important thing about muscle is is the strength aspect that it, that it gives you. And to me, that is, that is the foundation of any fitness program. Do you find that that is more prevalent, the the importance of strength to say baby boomers? Uh, Because that's when, the age group that starts to notice that they're not nearly as strong as they once were. Is that why that's at the top of their list? That's exactly when they start to realize what's important in life. <laughs> yeah. They have the family, they got the girl or they got the guy, right. you know, uh, they sell the BMW, they get the minivan and now they don't <laughs> want to be in pain anymore. And now they want to be able to go to uh, play sports with their kids and not be in pain and to enjoy life and, and, and uh, not exacerbate, or have the injuries they've had of their youth uh, start start creeping up on them. And what this does, what strength gives you, it, it, it buys you more time to, to be pain free. Because those injuries, they're they're lurking. If you if and as soon as you start getting weaker, those 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 injuries start becoming more pronounced. The main way I think to keep those things at bay is just to not lose any muscle and strength as we get older. You know, what I've noticed from all the years I've been training and really, really thinking about this and living it as well is that around age 30, you know, people, uh, both men and women are losing uh, muscle just from the nature of aging. And 
and maintaining that is is uh, is has become you know and should become the priority in, in our life. I mean, everything sort of slows down a little bit. We start to store a little bit more fat. Our joints get a little weaker when we're playing sports. The little injuries that you know that used to go away in uh, a day or two sometimes linger a little bit longer. Those little aches and pains. And I mean, I'm an active guy, so that happens. A lot of it, what, what women think is toning. Oh, I want to tone up. I want to tone up. I want to tone up. Well, girls, that's muscle. That's what it is. It's muscle. Hmm. And you get, you know, and you're not going to bulk up, you know, and get, you're going to be the best you can be. Right, Adam? Why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about bulking up? I mean, the thing as, about muscle is this. We all think that if you work out one way, the muscle will respond one way. And if you work out another way, the muscle responds the other way. For example, if you do the old adage is you do heavy weights, low reps, you'll bulk up. Your muscles will get big and bulky. Then the other thought would be if you do high reps, then you get toned, you get cut. That's like ridiculous. All right, When a muscle gets stimulated, when a muscle is fatigued, it makes itself stronger. And the way it makes itself stronger is by creating more what they call myofibrils, which are the cells within a muscle fiber. And, it get, and the muscle fibers get thicker and thicker and stronger. And either it's stimulated enough for that to happen or it's not stimulated enough for that to happen, period. It's not like it's going to bulk up one way. All right? A myofibril is a myofibril. It's the same. It, that's, that's, that's the reaction. More myofibrils, thicker muscle fibers. So, Adam, when I started my workout with Sheila several months ago, and she was explaining this workout through the power of 10, the slow motion, high intensity uh, strength training system that you've developed at Inform Fitness. Uh, she did a great job. I love the word she used when I was in the middle of the workout. I was getting a dose. I feel like I'm getting a deeper penetration into the muscle. Am I visualizing that correctly? Are there different types of muscle fibers that are being uh, stimulated through this protocol? Right. Well, first of all, let's talk about dose and the usage of the word dose. I'm so glad that you that resonated with you that that made that, that kind of affected you. And it's like, oh, I, because you know, Doug Doug McGuff, author of Body by Science, talks has a whole chapter in his book Body by Science about the dose response relationship. And Sheila used the word dosage because in her head that's how she sees it mm -hmm. because that's exactly what it is. And the dose response relationship that McGuff talks about is a relationship that, they, that every medical student, every doctor has to know and deal with. And that is understanding the dosage of a certain medicine to get the proper response. And, they all, and doctors all know that they have to balance just the right dosage to get just the right response because if the dosage is too little, there's not going to be or a too response. Much. And if the dosage is too much, it becomes toxic. So it's this balancing act of having the exact right doses to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. Now, exercise is exactly the same way because me medicine is a dosage. And a high-intensity exercise experience is a dosage. And what we need to do as individuals is understand what dosage works best for us to get the response we need. And that dosage in general on a bell curve of the human population is about once a week that dosage. It can vary for the individual by days and even weeks for that matter. But you have to start somewhere. And when you look at the general population, it seems that one week, one workout per week, you start seeing progress. You start seeing muscle strengthening and muscle gains. Wow, that fast. But this type of workout, not just any workout, right? And the analogy works really and the analogy works really well with more or less than you need. If you have too much exercise, well, now we're getting to my personal story about how my boss said I didn't look very good even though I was always very fit because I was tired. I was overtraining. I was getting hurt a lot. And then you have the opposite. You have people that, that you know, they, they do it half-assed. Let's, let's face it. They mm -hmm. go through the motions. They go to the gym. They're talking and reading People magazine. And they're not really getting any real dosage even though they might be spending a lot of time. Point is, they're not going to get any response. The dosage is too weak. Yeah, I think we're always uh, trying to figure out how to create this balancing act. And it's, it is a little difficult sometimes because we're all individual. We're all very different. Some people uh, can benefit from going 
two times a week, sometimes one time, one time a week is, uh, is, is absolutely appropriate. And the thing is, I think depending on what you're doing and how intense you're doing it, uh, you know, we have to, uh, try to figure this out and figuring out the right dose. Um, you know, we always start on a conservative level when we're trying to understand people's bodies, but then, uh, um, and then it usually becomes very intense, very, very quickly. But, uh, but understanding this dose response relationship, I think is one of the most important things in how we, uh, uh, think about our health in all aspects, from what we're eating to how much we're sleeping to the how much and the frequency of our exercise. So it's a uh, it's something that is is worth everyone thinking about a little bit. And one other thing that you know I that really had an impact on me when I first heard this is, and Adam said it was the the fact that muscle dictates to the rest of the body what happens. Basically, the muscle is the most demanding tissue in your body. So when you place a demand on that muscle, it makes the rest of the body stand up and pay attention. Hmm. Well, now you're bringing up something different now. So we got the dose response thing, which means, you know, you have the right stimulus, all right, and therefore you're waiting for the right response response that we're looking for is, is strength. Now, what does strength, getting back to the beginning of this podcast, what does strength give us? Why is strength, why is muscle so important? That's what Sheila is referring to now when she talks about the, the, the demands of muscle. All right, demands of muscle, you know, is an, another analogy I like to make is like the demands of a population. What happens when a lot of people start moving into a, to a new town and start developing a new town? All right, the more people that move into that town the more services need to be built to service those people. Or you have to have more restaurants, you have to have more supermarkets, you have to have a better transportation system. Everything has to improve to meet that demand. The utilities, the new electrical units, whatever that they call that stuff when they build out a city. So that's the demand, and the demand is the people. So when you're, when you're building muscle, that demand is occurring. The more muscle that you put on your frame, the more demand you're making on your body to meet those demands. And what does that mean? That means the heart, the transportation system, has to become more efficient. The infrastructure of the town has to improve the roadways. What do, well, that's our bones. That's our skeletal system. Once again, that's, it's more of a common fact that people understand that building strength will, will help with bone density. The idea of uh, strength training and exercise and, and, and staving off the effects of osteoporosis has been known for a while now. Well, it's because when you have strong muscles, again, the bones have to support those new stronger muscles, and they become more dense. So a question I have is you bring that up, and that's a fantastic analogy of the demand and supply and using that city analogy. And you're talking about with the, the building of the muscle, uh, the strength training, and, and its effect on various parts of the body, like Sheila introduced a minute ago. What about uh, organ functionality. You mentioned the heart as well too, but does that also, does building your muscles and becoming stronger also help you with other functionalities as well, like say for digestion? Exactly. Transit time, digestive, our ability to utilize, our glucose metabolism improves. That's a very interesting point because when I talked about these factors that I wanted to have separate podcasts about, mm -hmm. one of those things is the research being done on myokines. Myokines are these proteins that are generated from the muscles after high intensity exercise. They have anti-inflammatory uh, properties, but they also have what they call organ crosstalk. Your muscles can release these myokines and talk to other organs in your body to have them perform better. Hmm. Like the pancreas is actually utilizing insulin better. The liver's ability to uh, store more glucose improves. All these types of things, the mobilization of body fat for fuel improves as a result of these myokines being generated from, from the muscles that really high intensity exercise can only do for you. So, and this is recent stuff that we're learning about. So it's called organ crosstalk. So when you never thought in the past that high intensity strength training, it only lasts 20 minutes once a week, mind you, has these profound effects, not just on our strength and getting rid of our aches and pains and allows us to put something in the overhead a compartment in an airplane. But to be able to actually improve a digestion, to be able to help us mobilize body fat in a more efficient way, fantastic stuff that we're just learning about, anti-inflammatory uh, properties, 
it's, it's beyond what I ever thought possible. And the thing that, that, that just really, really turns me on about this is the, is the bang. Sing it that, to the, the Adam. Sing the, it. The bang that you get for your buck. I mean, we're talking about, yes, an intense experience, but we're talking about a 20-minute intense experience on an average of once a week to have these really profound effects occur. I mean, you'd think that for those types of positive effects, you'd have to work out every single day, hours at a time to have these things happen. Mm. But no. So to wrap up what we're talking about as far as the importance of muscle, of course, we started with aesthetics. Everybody wants to look good. And one of the challenges that we have as trainers in our field, in our, in our particular business, because we're not selling the pipe dream about you're going to look amazing. And this is the problem because everyone expects exercise to give them the body that they want and to lose all the once a week I can look like this. Well, no, I mean, body fat loss is also another part of it. And nutrition is as important as, as the strength training part. Now, what I want to point out all the time to people when they sit, because th you can see the disappointment in their face when I hit them with that dose of reality, that no exercise program is going to make them have that hard body that they're looking for if they're not watching what they eat. Everyone wants that exercise to be the magic bullet for that. So they first go, oh, are you kidding me? You're telling me that this once a week workout is not going to like give me, and I'm not going to lose 30 pounds in the next 30 weeks this way? Well, no, not from the exercise alone. But let me tell you something. If you don't lose a single ounce here, but you come here once a week and you work out really hard, you're going to be getting so many other benefits and you're going to have a lot of benefits and still be overweight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be strong and overweight than weak and overweight. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to be strong and svelte, then you got to do the nutrition part too. That, and then you can make that decision whenever you want to make that decision. But if you just did this, if you make the decision to do this once a week, you found the fountain of youth. And you might be overweight, but you found the fountain of youth. Your bones will be stronger as a result of it. Your glucose metabolism will be a little bit better because of it. And these are things people don't see, and this is the challenge. When I try to tell people, forget about the fat loss, you're getting all these other benefits, and you're like, eh, I just want to look good in a cocktail dress. Like, that's almost, that's almost all that matters. And it drives me nuts because there are so many more important things about strength training than just losing body fat, especially since weight training or any other exercise is not all that good at helping you lose body fat anyway. Mm. I mean, exercise isn't about that. It's about these incredible, profound things that we're finding out are happening just from 20 minutes of intense exercise. That's what I want to say in conclusion of all this, that you should understand that there's so much more than meets the eye. I mean, the weight loss and looking good is the tip of the iceberg. And when you go underneath, it's like, oh, my God, look at all this. Just well, do it. Just do it. And all it takes is, I don't know, what, five to seven exercises to supercharge your metabolism, increase cardiovascular endurance, and it will make you leaner and it will make you stronger if you follow those three pillars. Again, Adam, tell us what the mm -hmm. three pillars are, please, to support the power of 10 in this protocol. Exercise to maintain muscle mass. Nutrition that will help foster fat loss. And of course, the secret weapon and what came up in a way with our discussion on dose response, enough rest, which is the third pillar, rest and recovery, which is the response part of the dose and response equation. Now that is all explained in detail in Adam's book, which you can get at amazon.com. It's Right here, Power of 10, the once a week slow motion fitness revolution. I've got highlights, oh, everything's highlighted in here, and I've got tags, and I'm going through it and uh, really digesting this information. And it's changing my life, and you can do the same thing as well. There are several locations if you'd like to try this workout for yourself in California, Colorado, Virginia, New Jersey, and New York, where Adam and Mike are. Uh, we invite you to join Inform Nation. And to find an informed fitness near you, just visit www.informfitness.com. And when you call, please mention the podcast and maybe they'll throw some swag your way. I think we're working on some swag, aren't we, Sheila? You talked about some informed fitness shirts and what have we got? Yes, we are. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're working on some Inform Nation shirts. Inform Nation. That's right. And that's what we're looking for you to become a member of, folks, is Inform Nation. And now, if you have a question for Adam, Mike, or Sheila, or a comment regarding the Power of 10 or something we've talked about here on the podcast, you can shoot us an email 
to podcast at informfitness.com. You can also record a voice memo on your phone and send it to podcast at informfitness.com. And pretty soon we're going to start including some phone calls, some questions, and some comments from our listeners. The phone number is 888-983-5020, extension number 3. And uh, hopefully we'll go ahead and get some of those pretty soon and start including those uh, on the podcast. And finally, and very importantly, if you wouldn't mind, please, if you like what you hear, if uh, if you want more of these shows to continue to be released through iTunes and SoundCloud and Stitcher Radio and Acast and wherever you might be getting your podcast from, please leave us a review and subscribe to the show. That will ensure the success of this program and make sure that we have more episodes coming your way. All right, guys, great discussion today on muscle, the definition of muscle, and why it's so much more important to to build and maintain than just to look good in a cocktail dress. Thanks, guys, for joining us today. Good job. (laughs) I'm Tim Edwards, reminding you to join us again next time as we open up a series on intensity, high intensity in your workout. We'll define it and discuss the many benefits that await you by joining Inform Nation. Thanks for listening to the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 Minutes with Adam Zickerman and friends on the Inbound Podcasting Network.